I think we can move to the our last talk for this after this morning uh, session, which is Luis Felipe Lopez, the, char the character of religious testimony concerning the existence of miracles. Hi, Felipe. Hello. Hello. Hello, everybody. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Okay. Okay. Thank you very much, Professor Aguinaldo. Yes. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. So I will share my my. I have a, a a kind of paper. I prefer to read. I mean, it's better. It's kind of um, just just a second here um, to share my screen of my presentation. But I have to. <laughs> to find my presentation here. Here we go. OK. It's going. Can you see? Yep. OK. Tá em, tem em modo editor ainda para mim, eu não sei se. É, tem uma parte coberta do seu texto, na verdade. Ah. Agora tá ok. Ah, ok. Here we go. Uh, the character of the religious testimony about the existence of miracles. Um, it's, it's, it's not a complete paper. It's, it's a very small one. It's just a, a sketch. I'm trying to, to think about some, some um, approach concerning the problem of the miracle and the, the uh, reliability of the witness concerning the existence of miracles, especially when the witness is a, a religious one. Uh, that's the a classical problem that was pointed out uh, by him at the section 10 of the first inquiry. So this paper ends to show that Hume's argument against the reliability of religious testimony does not undermine its credibility, taking into account his all criteria. First of all, oh, I'm sorry, first of all, Hume proposed that the reliability of a testimony depends on the integrity of the, the character. Secondly, the integrity of character has to do with being well educated and have something to lose in terms of social standing. Then the Scottish philosopher concludes that since religious people are ignorant, ignorant and there are no social reputation to lose, they cannot be taken into account in their testimonies to support the existence of miracles. The problem with Hume's argument is first, that religious people, at least as far as Christianity is concerned, do not support their belief on wonder. And second, uh, martyrdom is a good evidence against the assumption that religious people have nothing to lose in social standing. The point one tried, um, the point one tried to point out that Hume assumes not correctly that what supports religion is the inclination to wonder without any kind of empirical evidence. What is not correctly since uh, wonder may be the result of reflection on their beliefs. For its part, the point two is a good evidence that religion's testimony is trustworth since to pay the price of their own life to maintain their faith is more challenged than low social reputation. So uh, one of the most uh, famous criticisms of the existence of miracles all made by him in the section 10 of the first inquiry. The Scottish philosopher suggests that we have no good evidence to support the belief that there are miracles. Hume's argument is based on two approaches. The occurrence of such an event, namely a miracle so extraordinary, is not supported by a body of evidence derived from experience strong enough to disprove the regularity of natural laws derived from customs. And second, uh, the testimony of uh, religious believers cannot be considered in favor of uh, belief in the existence of miracles, primarily because, as pointed out in the part of the section 10, there are not enough men of integrity to, test, to testify to any miracle. The tenets to the extraordinary leads in the case of miracles 
to fancy being regarded as reality. And miracles abound among uh, uh, ignorant and barbarous peoples. And for all testimony to the existence of miracles is opposed by a large number of witnesses belonging to different faiths. The present paper aims to criticize Hume's argument against miracles concerning the credibility of testimonies supporting the belief in the existence of miracles. The particular problem I will analyze is point two, um, two A. There are not enough men of integrity to testify to a miracle, namely the integrity of the character of religious witnesses. According to him, um, reliable testimony depends on the integrity of the witness. He tries to defend that religion pe people are not reliable, uh, reliable as witness of miracles because they are concerned with their faith and not with empirical evidence. In this sense, from a social perspective, what they have to lose depends on the truth of their faith, which makes them more favorable to miracle reports than to contrary evidence came from experience. Also, religious people are not very educated and lack common sense. If Hume is correct, then religious people maintain their faith based on illusion supported by the natural inclination to wonder and surprise only for the sake of promoting so holy a cause. His argument may be stated as follows. The reliability of the testimony depends on the integrity of the witness. I call the integrity clause. The integrity of uh, character has to do with being well educated and have, not, and have something, something to lose in terms of social standing. I have a conjunction here. Religious people are not educated because they base their faiths not on evidence but on a promise to wonder. They also have nothing to lose in terms of, of their social standing because they expose a really cause. Therefore, the testimony uh, of religious people is not uh, reliable. The conclusion. The problem with Hume's argument is that those religious people, at least as far as Christianity is concerned, compromise on truth, on truth and morality because God is true and good. In this sense, <clears throat> the role uh, that wonder plays in Christianity is not the cause of faith, but the result of recognizing the greatness of God. I mean, wonder is not what justifies uh, faith, but the fact of reflecting on the propositional content of faith. Second, martyrdom is good evidence against this, uh, the assumption that religious people have nothing to lose in social standing. The fact that many Christians, in order to bear witness to their faith, pay the price of their own uh, lives while also being ridiculed is good evidence in favor of religion witness if you take uh, uh, this, that criterion of uh, Hume seriously. The reason is that martyrdom is more challenging than social prestige. Those concerned with social prestige has less to lose than those who risk death because of their faith. For those who do not profess the truth, have more personal gain in preserving their reputations. Okay. At the beginning of part two of the section 10, Hume, discussing the problem of rehabilitation of testimony, assumed that it is easy to show that never was a miracles event established, established on so full an evidence. He's dealing with the criterion that eventually should make the existence of miracle probable, presented at the very end of the part one, which is that no testimony is sufficient to establish a miracle unless the testament be of such a kind that its falsehood would be more miracles than the fact which is endeavors to establish. Uh, what seems to be a retreat on his whole statement that being a miracle so extraordinary that the force of evidence in favor of its existence is always weaker than the evidence of the regularity of the laws of the nature is in fact a new approach to prove the impossibility of miracles not based on empirical and contrary evidence, but on the uh, character of witness. In doing so, Hume is shifting the strategy and taking into account a subjective factor that affects the credibility of the testimony and that has to do with the personal character of the witness, that is, her integrity. In, integrity. in his own words, for first, uh, there is not to be found in our history and miracle tested by a sufficient number of men of such unquestioned good sense, education, learning, as to secure us against our delusion in themselves, of such undoubted integrity, 
as to place them beyond all suspicion of and design to deceive others of such credit and reputation in the eyes of mankind as to have a great deal to lose in case of their being detected in, in falsehood. And at the same time, attesting facts performed in such a public manner and in so celebrated a part of the world as to, as to render the detection unavoidable. All which circumstances are, uh, are requisite to give us a full assurance in the testament of man. Integrity in that sense has two features that give us a full assurance in the testament of man. Be well educated and have a social, rep uh, social reputation. About the first point, being well educated depends on to base our reason on a strong set of evidence, since a wise man proportioned his evidence to the, sorry, proportioned his belief to the evidence. For him, the force of our evidence due to redirect uh, experience about the world via impressions, since they increase the vivacity of the ideas that are the images of them, what, uh, what is uh, known by copy theory. Our beliefs are not only a kind of intellectual result of reasoning, but for the Scottish philosopher, a kind of sentiment which withdraw its force from experience. The more vivid the belief, the more dedicated to the evidence. As far as miracles are concerned, its existence depends on reasoning of matters of fact, hence on experience. In that sense, the ultimate base of testament is not the report in itself, but a set of empirical evidence in favor of the content, what is called a reductionism thesis. In that, uh, sorry, in that sense, Hume is clear on his point. And as the evidence derived from witness and human testimony is founded on past experience, so it varies with the experience and is regarded either as a proof or a probability according as the conjunction between any particular kind of report and any kind of object has been found to be constant or variable. In that way, what religious people do is to promote their own faith because they have interest in on the cause on behalf of maintaining their religiosity as acceptable, but without any kind of evidence. They take advantage, religious people, of the natural inclination to wonder and surprise, arising a passion from miracles events, which is an agreeable emotion, creating the illusion that the vivacity of the belief that there is miracles is based on impressions, and which, in fact, are the result of a mistake reasoning. So, being not well educated is the same as to base its beliefs on passion that create an uh, illusion of veracity of the occurrence of miracles, take its vivacity from a false uh, resemblance between two facts, one in the present and uh, the other in the past. What's wrong with Hume's argument? Is that religious people not rely their belief on the emotions and passions. It's not true, truth that God existence. It's not true, sorry. Uh, that God existence exists, sorry, because I can feel it, I can feel it, but that we see his power among us doing extraordinary things. If it's true, what I assert, if there is a God, such as the Christian one, it is plausible to believe that he is capable, capable to act on the world and do, some, and do some things that are not comprehensible, or at least, as pointed out by Augustine and Aquinas, do some things that we cannot comprehend from our actual knowledge about the uh, structure of the world. Being the truth and the good, it is not against reason to assume that God is taking care of the world with love and power, also act on it. Another problem with Hume's approach, as presented by Peter Harrison, is that he understands miracles only in a naturalistic perspective. So the existence of miracle is reasonable only if it's explainable in a scientific approach, not taking into account what religion has to say about it. But assuming that God exists, we have good reasons to believe that miracles are possible. Since the existence uh, of miracle 
is not uh, measurable by scientific methods. Only if you take it, uh, of, uh, only if you take serious that naturalistic that naturalistic uh, perspective is true. Not only that, but the Scottish philosopher seems to take some ordinary religious people as the model of rationality to religion. What is incorrect? This becomes evident when Hume asserts that miracles are not uh, realizable since they are observed chiefly to abound among ignorant and barbarous nations. First of all, the problem with the testimony of simple people is that they are ignorant and barbarous. In what sense they are like that? Because they do not rely their beliefs on empirical evidence, but only on faith. Nevertheless, even simple religious people have good reasons to believe in miracles, since their belief in the existence of God provides to them at least a reason in favor of the existence of miracles. So, the assumption that they are not well educated is only plausible in a naturalistic philosophy, what is incompatible with Christianity. The second point highlights that the assurance in the testimony of man depends on a social feature that Hume calls social reputation. Second Hume, uh, accordingly, ring, sorry, uh, there is not to be found uh, in our history any miracle attested by a sufficient number of men of such credit and reputation in the eyes of mankind as to have a great deal to lose in case of their being detected in the falsehood. The Scottish philosopher proposed a criterion that make having uh, something to lose sorry, that make to have something to lose in social perspective relevant to the assurance of a testimony. His thought is that a person that has a social life that builds such a thing as reputation and credit in the eyes of others' social members has good reasons not to defend a false belief, okay, belief, since his social life will go to ruin, for example, uh, to shame, to contempt, and, and other kind of... Uh, uh, lose the, the, the reputation that they build up uh, between the, the, his peers, for example. According to Hume, who asserted that there is a miracle without evidence, probably has nothing to lose in their social life, especially due to reputation. Here you can point out two problems. First, if Hume is right in his assumption, the history shows us that Christians had much more to lose in during many centuries, maintain the veracity of their faith, then to negate it. And second, social reputation is not a good criterion to the reliability of testimony. Concerning one, to believe that P, being such a belief very common among the members of a society, seems to be easier than to believe that P, being P, not commonly acceptable without a, within a society. So his argument could be correct concerning Christians only if in every society is more acceptable to believe that there are miracles, uh, they're not. What history shows us is that ma martyrdom is a good evidence against human assumption. Since Christians had to pay with their life to defend their beliefs, what is much more dealing than social reputation, for example, for four, five, six centuries at the beginning of Christianity, for example. Now. About the second point, many times one could believe that P only to seem an upright person even though not re uh, really believing that P is true. In that sense, the belief is a kind of social response not to lose their reputation, since this kind of commitment has not, nothing to do with truth, but only with social relationship. So, if A says that there is no miracles, it is possible that she's doing so only to pretend to be a science person, not because it has good, she has good evidence uh, against the existence or occurrence of such events. Hence, social reputation, there is no commitment with the truth of beliefs, but only with society. If I'm correct and Hume is true, what I think he is not, not only religious people has interest in what they affirm, but anyone of good reputation as well, what do not make them engaged with the, vera the veracity of the belief, but only with her social reputation. So that's my, uh, my presentation. My conclusion here 
is that um, first, if Hume is right, um, uh, his his criteria is not good to apply on Christianity. First, because uh, the to be well educated is only works né, in that sense if you take a serious naturalistic perspective. Uh, the second criteria about the social reputation is a criteria criterion that there is no commitment with truth okay so uh, to maintain our social reputation is not a good criterion because you don't have any kind of uh, you, you can pretend to be a upright person even if you don't believe uh, for example that miracles are not possible just to not lose the reputation that you, you have uh, gained uh, during your life. So in that sense, I think that um, this criteria, the, this criteria that Hume presents at the section 10 of in first inquiry, uh, at least that concerning the character of the witness, they are not good criteria to to um, to make the existence of miracles not uh, even reasonable at all. Okay, thanks a lot. So I see we have questions already. Uh, Professor Taliaferro. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for this um, paper. Very much enjoyed it. Um, one thing I wonder whether you've looked at is um, Hume's dismissal of um, black intelligence. That is, Hume was infamously um, a kind of white supremacist. He um, thought that um, in terms of national characters, he claimed that um, nobody who was not white has achieved the greatness of white culture. And I think that there is a kind of an interesting and very unfortunate parallel between Hume's dismissal of reported miracles uh, which he thinks are from barbarous, uneducated people, and his dismissal of, at, at the time, you know, Hume was, uh, died in 1776, but at the time when he was living in London, um, persons from Black Africa and the Caribbean would come to London and they would perform, they would write poetry in front of large crowds. And um, there was the poet from Jamaica that Hume, on hearing this, said, even a parrot could come up with a poem. You know, in other words, taking the evidence and just construing it um, as just simply memoriz memorized bit, not actual creativity. I wonder if you have anything to say about um, Hume in terms of what you said about reputation and integrity is really good, but he really did dismiss non-whites who supposedly, um, according to many and the testimony at the time, really did display creativity and intelligence. Uh, I, you can just treat this as, as a comment. It doesn't yes, I, I, I got it, I got it. I, I think so, because, what I think that he's trying to, um, I, 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 I was, I, I'm not really, uh, um, informal about the relation between Hume and the, the, the black people and the testimony of, for example, the people from, uh, uh, from Africa, for example. But what, what, what I can see here uh, concerning the, 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 the problem of the, of the character of the witness is something that um, he's concerned about the I think he's trying to save the science from Newton, okay? And everybody that is not um, rely uh, on uh, their own beliefs on, on, for example, what science has to say about, for example, the existence of uh, entities, they do not take into uh, as a, a good point. And in sometimes I think he, he see, for example, simple, I, I can say simple people, 
has uh, people that there is nothing to con to contribute to the debate about on philosophy. So they maintain like a, a, a common sense in philosophy, in, not in philosophy, in society, uh, just based on the passions. So I, 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 what I can say, I, I'm not sure if uh, if it's a, it's a good comment what you, you professor had said, but is that for, for Hume, uh, simple people is uh, driven by passion only, not by reason, something like that. Thank you. Okay, we have another question from, we have another question from Professor Agnaldo, please. Uh, thank you, Luis Felipe. And uh, um, from your answer to Professor Talia Ferro's question, and uh, from your paper, I gather you, you're not accusing him of an a dominant fallacy. You're accusing him, you're accusing him uh, 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 for um, uh, begging the question. Uh, I mean, uh, he, he, he wants to show that uh, um, uh, testimony doesn't prove or testimony is not a good evidence for um, belief in miracles, which refer to the existence of a supernatural uh, being because of his naturalism. In the, in, so in the end, he's uh, uh, begging the question because he presupposes that there's no supernatural being to arrive to, to draw the conclusion that there's no supernatural being, a supernatural being anyway. But, but uh, why, why, don't, why don't you use that argument as well? Um, uh, uh, I mean, uh, Talia Fer, uh, Professor Talia Ferro's argument too. Um, I mean, why, why not accusing him, him also of um, uh, an abdominal fallacy? Well, I think he, I think he has a, a dominant fallacy because, for example, to, in, in also question the bag to explain what it's a barbarous or ignorant people. To be, uh, I, can't, I can't believe that the... Uh, uh, miracles are probable because they abound between uh, ignorant and barbarous people. And why be, Why uh, they are ignorant and barbarous people? They don't have like a good answer about that, just because what they presuppose is that uh, uh, simple people do not have any kind of evidence. So he said, uh, to be barbarous is not to have any kind of evidence. So barbarous uh, people like religious people do not have any kind of evidence, so they can't prove that they, uh, we, we can't uh, 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 believe in the the testimony came from them because they are barbarous. I think we have here also a catch of the bag because what they they try to to prove as barbarous and ignorant, they presuppose, for example, there is no evidence that they don't use an evidence from an empirical perspective. So. We, they don't have any kind of evidence on pre, on, on the religion perspective, on uh, empirical perspective, so we can believe on the testimony. But you can believe on the testimony because they don't have any kind of evidence uh, from empirical perspective. A second part, because I didn't uh, write uh, on my my paper, uh, but I worked this on my uh, dissertation uh, on my master. I, I I I agree with Professor Charles. Because they don't have, they don't present a good um, answer. Be why? Just religion people is uh, those who don't have any kind of social reputation, and they are only the, the only people that are driven by uh, their passions without any kind of uh, good uh, reasoning criterion. So, I think they have a, a dominant uh, fallacy because. Uh, what they uh, take in account about the characteristic of uh, religious people is because they are religious. <laughs> so to be religious is the same as to be uh, ignorant or barbarous. 
So I back to my first uh, point of the, the answer, because to be embarrassed is not to be to have evidence. In not to have evidence, you, you can't believe in a testimony without evidence. So uh, any kind of religious testimony uh, has this, uh, how can I say this, original sin <laughs> uh, to be religious is to maintain a belief without evidence. So, but I, but I, but I, 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 I'm not sure if, uh, especially concerning the, the the section 10, that they have a good uh, answer about that. Because we, what what you can see prima facie is if there is a God, it's probable that uh, miracles exist. So, uh, to person that they don't follow naturalist philosophy. They have good uh, reasons to believe that miracles exist because they believe in a God that it's capable to doing extraordinary, uh, extraordinary events, you know, to produce extraordinary events. But I agree with you, again, out with also with Charles, with Professor Taliaferro. But I didn't explore, I didn't uh, uh, put this on my paper. I, I, I think I will put it out. I, I, maybe I look for this, this example that was pointed out by Professor Charles to make a, like a, 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 uh, to improve my evidence against this kind of argument that him proposed in the section fan. Thank you, again, I'll, I'm, I'm not sure if I answer your question correctly. <laughs> Great, thank you. So we have another question from Cristiano Dutra Battista. Cristiano? Hi. Wait, Can you hear me? Yes. Well, uh, hi, Filippi. Nice to see you Hello, here. Hello, Christian. Hi, yeah. <laughs> I'm fine. Nice to see you again. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, okay, uh, uh, more or less in the same line that were the questions or the comments that Professor Aguinaldo and Professor Taliaferro uh, were addressing to you. Um, I was thinking here that, uh, okay, um, we have all these issues about Hume, I mean the person Hume and all his uh, limits, but uh, as philosophers, I don't know, I, I, I try also uh, always to be a little bit uh, generous with the view that that philosopher had at, at his time and in, in this the society that he lived at his time. Uh, I'm not defending here. I'm, I'm, I, I know all the, the problems that are involved. But what exactly he was talking about when he talks uh, uh, about these uh, barbarous people, or uh, in your words, simple people? Okay. If 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 we try to 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 get it to our reality nowadays, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, we will we, see that it's not the case that those people are more uh, prone to believe in miracles because uh, they are uh, because they they lack an, an education. I think it's not it it was not the case even at, at, in in Hume's time. Okay, we, we we had kings and we have many people that uh, nobles that have uh, access to education and still do believe in in in, in miracles. I think that is not the the, the the problem here. But when you're talking specifically about these people that we, uh, he will uh, call barbarous, uh, people that doesn't have uh, sufficient uh, education, okay? Maybe we can think on people that, that are in need, they are uh, in, in extreme need, like people that we have today. And, and if we if we bring it to our uh, uh, um, reality, twenty uh, first century, okay, in Brazil, in Africa, in uh, many other countries, I will not say that simple person they are less intelligent and therefore more prone to believe in miracles or something like that. But it is a fact that people in need they really. Uh, uh, well, the, the expression <laughs> tells for itself, they need something uh, to bring any hope or anything um, anything positive to their lives, okay? Uh, it, it's not out of coincidence that, for instance, uh, many um, 
many of these uh, neopent neopentecostal neopentecostal neopent well charismatic <laughs> charismatic <laughs> churches uh, that are in a rising in, in, in nowadays they seek specifically the people that that, that live in in uh, the, the the most poor uh, um, neighborhoods people that are unemployed people that are, are that are suffering with hungry with um, many uh, other circumstances in, in the lack of state uh, uh, the, the, it's, it's where these people thrive okay mm -hmm. uh, as i say it's not a coincidence because they know that these people and and also uh, many of these uh oh, I know that I, I, I don't want to to make it a, a generalization here. I know there are very uh, many people that are good intention in this, uh, uh, even the same religion. But there are uh, we can't deny that are um, a big part of these, uh, or at least a part of uh, people in these religions that have malicious intentions. Um, the miracle is something that moves these religions. You have miracles every single day in 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 these churches. You see the devil in these churches, as you see um, <laughs> as frequently as we never saw in the entire human history. So they need the miracle to move these people. What I'm saying, all these things, because maybe you should be uh it's more like a comment not i don't know if it's i can pose it as a question but if i can pose it as a question i'll ask you it's not the case that you have to be more precise on what kind of miracle we're talking here okay because we're talking about this uh special and big events that everybody knows like um, uh, the resurrection of Jesus Christ or all the miracles that happens with the saints that give them these status, okay? Or even the, for, it, for uh, but it, it, we have these kind of miracles and we have these daily miracles that happens every time in this, these churches, you see? Those, these arguments serves well, both of them, I, I have my doubts on, on that, you see? Mm -hmm. And also, uh, for instance, uh, the people that see those miracles in these churches, in these poor neighborhoods that I said before, okay? They really are not, uh, um, it's not, a, they, they are not concerned why that happened, who made it happen or whatever. It's, it's, it's not a concern. On the other hand, we have the big churches like um, the Roman Catholic, for instance, that, that have uh, very strict methods to uh, assure that uh, a supposed, an alleged miracle was really an, a miracle. They have an, an, a team of scientists and theologists that will analyze the case for years and see. You see the difference in, 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 in both cases, okay? Can we apply this this argument or this defense that you are making to both of them, or it would be better if you explain a, a, a little better what kind of miracle we're talking exactly uh, here? Okay, uh, is, is is that it? I think. But also your text is I, I love your text and very well written. And okay, <laughs> that's it. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Just a, a very short answer, because uh, when you talk about miracles in him, miracle is very specific. It's the transgression of the laws of nature. That's the problem that I point out and Peter Harrison point out, because it's a kind of naturalistic perspective. So, miracle, it, it, from a, a naturalistic point of view, is a tr transgression of the law of nature. Uh, what what you, you can say, for example, with Augustine and Aquinas, is that miracle is not uh, a kind of uh, scientific problem, a kind of scientific matter, you know? It's a kind of religion matter, it's not scientific matter. So it's not something like that concern, for example, a physicist, a, a, a chemist, uh, and so on, uh, astronomy, for example. So he's trying to talk about extraordinary events. 
what I'm trying to say is that uh, to be to take him serious, you have to be natural uh, a naturalist. So and religion, they can't be naturalist. Uh, otherwise, they have like a contradiction between their faith and what the naturalist point of view. That what uh, uh, he, uh, that what uh, Agnaldo points out, that to be naturalist, <laughs> we have to to believe that there are uh, no supernatural entities. So it's obvious uh, um, that miracle is not possible came from a naturalist perspective. So what I, it's not the, the it's not the the aim of my paper to discuss what kind of miracle we have to take in account. What I'm trying what I'm trying to put to point out is that Hume, there is no uh, good reason to maintain this kind of criticism. You know, even if you take it, if you take seriously, if you take as true their own criteria that he presents on the paper, you know. But he's talking about the extraordinary events as miracle. I think Professor Charles has another question. Um, I'm, I'm good. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay, any other question? I've noticed there was a question in the chat. Okay, uh, Nicole Alexandre, modern observation. Miracles maybe are occurring frequently, but they are still not a regularity. What do you think? Yes, you, you can. Uh, you have the the one of the problem of the definition of miracle on Hume is, is there is no good uh, reason. There is no good criterion to make a difference between what is regular and what is common. You know, so for example, if you it's not common that uh, I know uh, a special buzz you call special. Uh, um, one of spatial uh, shuttle, you call it. Um, how do you call it? One uh, of spatial space shuttle. Space shuttle is it? Uh, for example, it's not common that space shuttle go to, for example, to the moon, but it's not a miracle. So we have to to make it uh, uh, to a good criteria to to make a difference between what is what is very rare and what's miracle, extraordinary. So I think that uh, Hume, there is no good point to make this this difference. If you take serious his uh, philosophy of testimony and his philosophy of laws of nature, that is very questionable. That nature has regularity. Felipe, estou não puder parar de compartilhar porque está. Ainda está compartilhando? Sim. Eu já tinha perdido. Ok. Pronto. Agora foi. E temos uma outra pergunta do professor Agnaldo. Do you know why I decided to speak in português? No, I changed my mind. It's too ah. late already, isn't it? Father, for me, it's up to you guys. Uh, like, uh, you know, maybe we can have question up until uh, 2 p.m. But maybe you are starting to feel hungry. So, thanks a lot for all this interesting talk. Thanks a lot, Felipe. And uh, so, now is the lunch break. We'll come back at 2 p.m. with uh, Stephen Lowe and then Professor Bertato uh, from Unicampi. So, uh, ah. Charles had another question. No, everything's okay. good. All is good. Perfect. OK, so as I was saying, thanks a lot. We now we are on our lunch break. We will come back at you with uh, Stephen Lowe and then Fabio Bertato. And uh, this time we will end uh, the first afternoon session. We will have just you talks by our keynote speakers. So Stephen Lowe and Fabio Bertato. Then uh, there will be another break, some other talks, and then our final talks for this event. So I'll see you all at 2 p.m. Thank you very much, and uh, I'll see you soon. In, uh...